Hey guys. guys. Welcome well, back to our channel. Hello. We haven't done a sit down together video for ages. I know we haven't. Um, we're doing a Q&A um, related around business and um, the industry of blogging, social media. We um, put a little um, poll and question to our Instagram followers asking us what questions you'd like to know about blogging and business and having our own business and kind of what we do on a daily basis. Protocol, how it works, what we do. Got some really, really, yeah, really great they're questions. Better than the surface, they're great questions, they're not the surface level, which we answered previously in another video. So they're yeah. more in-depth questions. So hope you enjoy. If you do, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more of these videos. Yay. Okay, so we're gonna just do it, like we both screenshot the questions. We're gonna take it in turns rather than just blabbing <laughs> over the questions and be like, blah, 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 because it's just, it's too ridiculous. So um, I'll go first. Yep. The first question is from Erin H124. Hi, Erin. Thanks for commenting on our Hi. post. Um, she said, What's your process in putting an outfit together? So, how do we plan our outfits? We, first of all, for example, if we get a new um, a delivery, a delivery in, a bunch of new pieces of clothing in, we kind of put all our back hang all up and kind of just start styling from there. We'll try and think, we'll try not to style um, brands with brands, so like the same brand all together on the paid sponsored post. We like to make it look more organic. So, for example, like this top here, I start with blue jeans, and then we think more so, okay, we're styling outfits for ourselves ourselves to wear every day it's more casual put together what's comfortable what looks good in our body shape what's practical reflect our own yeah, style for our for photo shoots we're trying to think more what will you guys want to see more and what conveys best is a strong outfit um on camera so for example we might think okay this nice balloon shaped top will look really cool with a nice leather skirt and a pair of high heels for a date night look next question is from sam excel um Always loving your outfits. Thank you. Um, question one, how do you expand your viewing on your blog slash getting more people to read it? Um, so I guess to answer that, it's really, I guess, the, the science behind blog posts, which is um, the analytics and the SEO management. So I guess about using, we're really, <laughs> we're bad, really bad at this and we need to do this better. Um, and it's all about reachability, reaching more people, reaching new people. So it's talking about things that are on trend. So say if it's during Paris Fashion Week, when we do posts around Paris Fashion Week or topical, topical fashion, events, topical things like Mother's Day, Fashion Week, Christmas, Spring Racing Carnival, and using those keywords in your blog post title or the first sentence of your blog post, mm -hmm. it link it ranks higher on Google because it's topical, it's trending, everyone's talking about, it and Google ranks it higher. So that's just a one basic tip. Again, we're not experts in that. We want to be. We're gonna yeah. learn more about it because it's really important. But well, then, we've noticed that when we do post content surrounding these themes, yes. they get better engaged and basically. even across youtube as well when we did stuff paris fashion week london fashion week mm. we got double the amount of views as normally would because it was topical yeah. and we used the right tags right the right hashtags and tag and grouping tags so youtube pushed higher out to our following or yeah. on the network more because it was trending yes that's that question um number two how do you plan when and what you post um to upload the next day oh, hang on yes. how do you plan when and what you post to upload next and do you both always agree on what kind of goes up, up on the blog? Yes and no. We don't always agree but we always have similar themes in mind. We obviously always obviously talk about what we want to post, what we want to create content for that marries across the blog and our Instagram because yeah. we don't, while we want them to be run autonomously and separately, we want them to have a similar message across. Yeah, at this stage we're kind of, I'm kind of more reactive with the blog post content because our Instagram is the main priority, although we wanted to change that. So, for example, Beck's like, oh, we're posting this photo on Instagram page. I'm like, oh, can I make it into a blog post? Yeah, where I'm like, hey, I'm going to move into more of a stage where I'm like, hey, we're doing a Christmas gift guide. I need a photo for the Instagram page to marry in with a blog post content. So, we want to try and shift it up a little bit to do more blog post content and more writing on there. So, um, we can make them um, autonomous from each other as well. Yeah, and it just helps, I guess, attract new viewers, new readers, and have each platform running successfully on its own rather than having to be linked one in together. But being twins, it's quite fortunate that we, fortunate we usually agree on most of the content we have the same brain. Yeah, exactly. So generally we are pretty in sync with agreement with what to post. It's true. Um, another question from the same user, how do you get brands to collaborate with you, e.g. receiving PR packages or advertising um, a brand's product? How would you connect them or what would you do for more exposure? Yeah. Um, this one is two answers really we so first of all when we first started we were very proactive yeah um we would contact a lot of pr oh, it's like cold calling yeah. but cold emailing we would construct an email that um i guess start off sentences would be like hey guys 
that introduces who we are, we're from Twice Plus, um, put our handles in there and our metrics and our, our reach. Our stats. Our stats, and then speak about what we can offer the brand. So if we were approaching Finders Keepers or Cameo the Label, Australian Fashion Labels, we'd say, hey guys, love your brand. We love seeing XYZ wear at the races. Try and make it personal because you are emailing a brand. There's, they get so many emails, make it personal. Nothing worse than when a brand emails you and it's not personal. Oh. And they're like, hi. X, Y, Z person. Um, I love your my friend. Yeah, it's, like, so do you know what I mean? So I think make it personal as well because that will really send out two brands. So. Yeah, and even just, I guess, a personal type of saying, we think that this um, Sally top and skirt combo will look great for our blog post on this. Yeah, you know, I think come with a purpose. If, you're first, if it's your first time reaching out to this particular brand or PR agency, make it intentional. So, for example, if you're thinking of being more creative, if you've got, if it's um, obviously Christmas and New Year's coming up, say, okay, Hi, Australian Fashion Labels, I'd love to do a party edit. Will and include some of your pieces. And include some of your pieces, would this be possible? So come with an idea, first of your first reach out to a brand, impress them. You want to try and give them a bit of a pitch, impress them a little bit, and then go from there. If you've got more of a, a long-term relationship, it is easier to say, hey guys, love you some stuff to wear. Um, so yeah. there's also that proactiveness that we first of all do. Um, and then secondly, we get a lot of reactive emails coming to us as well. But you just direct message on Instagram and say, there's a new brand you like. Say, hey guys, I'd love to collaborate. What is this possibility? And we still do that today. Like yes. I'll still email direct message brands saying we'd love to work together. Do you have an email we can contact you on? Mm -hmm. So it's the initial reach out. And then when I email them, it's more of a professional, this is what we can do for you guys. We'd love to do this or this. What are your thoughts? We'd love to be collaborative. Yes. Even if it's an unpaid work, which most of the stuff is unpaid work, we love to be collaborative, that kind of stuff. And I think brands are like collaborations that. as well. So for example, if you've got a small following um, and you just want to reach out to get, to get loaned a few pieces or if, if it's not possible to get loaned, maybe say in exchange I can offer you some content, some, yeah. some free content of me wearing the dress or the shoes, whatever, in exchange for um, you loaning or gifting yeah. to me. This, it's going to be a, a give and take. You've got to give something and you've got to receive something as well. So yeah. if you're asking to get gifted a top or a dress, say I can give you something else in exchange besides just exposure on Instagram because if you've got a small following, it may not be enough. Yeah. Cool. Next question is from um, Jacob Ina Louise, I think, on Instagram. I'm sure, I'm sure whether it's related to your topics you're going to answer, but we'd love to know if you guys have ever allowed someone to come and work, do some work experience for you guys. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. We need help. However, <laughs> we work from home, still in our family home, out of our spare room, which we can to an office, so we just don't feel like at this stage it's probably feasible. We want to put our best foot forward, not to look perfect and prim proper, but also to I wanna we want to create a nice working environment, even just for work experience, because that's how we like to operate. We're very private people in terms of we like we we're, we're good hostesses, so yeah. I wouldn't I feel uncomfortable sometimes coming to my home and it it's my mum's the parents' home too, so it's yeah. not really fair. Um, if we had gotten off the space in the near future, I definitely would love to. Um, I don't think we're being nice who'd be like I don't know, talented and skilled in a certain area. But I feel like if you guys think we are, then we'd love to just share some insight on what we got, what we do, and would love the extra help. That'd be fantastic. But yeah. at this stage, not. But maybe once in the we future. once we expand and go into an office, most definitely. Yeah. And it kind of I guess falls into the next question really easily because so we're going to get an office space. Um, but we lost a couple of our digital clients in the same day that they just couldn't afford to pay us anymore, and just it was out out of our control why they need to step away from um, working with us. So we yeah, lost a bit of income in one day. So we're like, okay, now we can't afford an office space. Yep. This leads on to the next question, which is from Katie Sky Shelley. How did you deal with unre um, the unreliability and inconsistency with making money when you first went full time? Good question, still struggling with yes. that. <laughs> and what was the certain point that you decided you could support yourself with blogging, influencing full time, i.e. making X amount of money per month, having X amount of contracts each month? What advice would you give regarding managing income for bloggers influencers? This is actually more of a me question because I do all the accounting in twice less. And Marissa's most of the spending. I do not. <laughs> anyway, um, it was, I mean, for me, when we it was been, and is still we've been challenging. full time for two years now, um, it was definitely a big leap of faith. I mean, it is much easy, it was much easier for us because we do live at home um, and we're blessed to live at home. Our parents don't ask us to pay board or anything like that. So we have low expenses in terms of overheads of you know, renting a property. Um, so that was a safety net of, of living at home. She was a graduate. But if you're going, you know, you, you, if, you're, if you're 25 our age, you're going from earning a full-time wage, which is you're able to survive on and be sustainable on and you know, save money and buy things with, to going on an uh, unknown question mark wage. Um, so that was a bit challenging for us because we just didn't know what we are going to 
get in but however we offset that with having our digital um, business on the side so yep. we have twice as digital and that was a contract basis uh, client so, so we, we had, signed clients on for six to twelve months so we had a retainer based client every single month yep. so for us um, I think when we went we knew we needed to have each a reasonable full-time wage um, having our own business before we decide to leave full-time and it, it varies some months we've made some months we made $120 other months we made <laughs> Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. And I mean, we do split that yet again. So, and it's not all our wage. We only pay. In all honesty, we only pay ourselves not that much per month, like two thousand dollars a month. I don't pay us. Like, I, I pay us five hundred dollars a month sometimes. So we don't pay ourselves that much. We're still trying to figure out figure out the give and take of expenses versus income. Um, and we're not. A, we don't have our background in, in accounting. Um, so it's a bit. I'm learning it now as well. Um, and we ordered to an Uber Eats. So I'm like, whoops. Yeah, um, I think it's hard. Like, I think into that question, how do you know when it's the right time? It's never going to be the right time because you're always going to potentially give and take. It's like a yes. roller coaster. Some months you make do really well. You might have like a five thousand to ten thousand dollar month, which is fantastic. Other months you might have a three thousand dollar month, which is still great if you're one person. But if you're two people, that's again half yeah. that. And then you just pay your photographers, your videographers, your accountants, all yeah. that stuff as well. So the good thing is, if you're having a really good month, we know, for example, during Fashion Month. Um, so March, May, Melbourne and um, Sydney Fashion Month, like overseas Fashion Month, Spring Racing Carnival, we are very, very busy and we have potential to earn double what we usually earn per month. So those months we know we're going to put all our eggs in one basket, yeah. go down ho and save as much as we can, put the most of the side. I think it's also like, yeah, I guess from a business perspective, it's about forecasting. Yeah. Really understanding your next 12, 6 to 12 months and understanding where the money should come, depending on marketing budget as well. You know that before the financial year, Budgets are low for brands because they don't have much left in the kitty. So, you know, at Jan, Feb, they're setting their marketing budgets. So, Feb, March, there's going to be a lot of money being spent on marketing campaigns or yeah. social media campaigns. So, that's when you really hit up brands and then save September, October because it's after financial year. Yeah, exactly. So, I yeah. think the best thing to do is if you're thinking about stepping into a full-time blogging sphere, try and first of all get something to offset your income. So, a secondary source of income that can be coming in that's not from your blog. So even if it's like a part-time job. Part-time job. Even if it is, for example, like if you're doing reward style or um, uh, commission-based income, that can be an extra 100 bucks a month that you're just sitting there working on your on your website or through your Instagram account that you'll be churning in. Affiliate links, yeah. Even if you have a small following using apps like Vamp or um, Shopping Links yeah. or Hype Tap, they and what other, what's the other one? Uh, There's so many. Got it. Try or try. So, actually, yes. We'll link them below. There's about four or five um, websites you can go platforms. platforms that they actually um, provide job opportunities for bloggers and influencers to connect with brands. And it's more based around the micro influencers. So, like between the three thousand and twenty thousand dollar thousand follower mark, they have great opportunities with like great brands like Tom Ford, Michael Kors, yes. Estee Lauder. But for lower price points, but at least some money to come in every single month for it. Yeah, exactly. guarantee. Them. So that's that question. Hope it answered that. Sorry, waffled. Yeah, sorry. And we are overlapping. Um, next question from You Shall Not Fear. Okay, how did you guys start? What kind of work background are you coming from? Okay, so we uh, come from a marketing background. Um, we also work in retail alongside studying marketing at university. Um, and so I guess for us, when we started, it was kind of a guinea pig from our marketing knowledge to say, okay, well, if Twice Blessed is the product and our followers are our customers, how do we reach more customers? Yeah. And so we use that as a guinea pig as a foundation of, okay, well, if we can do this really well for ourselves, we can replicate it for other brands. So like with Twice Blessed, when I was at an agency, I was doing it for Tony Bianco, and now we do it for our own clients. So we, I guess that model of create your own content, create a visual. regrammable content that's yeah. visual and strong, it will help boost, grow your following. And so that we did that at the start, and then brands loved our look. We were twins, we were the first kind of twin bloggers on the market. Mm -hmm. Um, particularly in Melbourne, um, and brands wanted to invest in that, what we're doing, they love what we're doing, they love our message, and it kind of grew from there. It wasn't like a formula, it was kind of like, we just started. Literally, we got a tripod, got a camera, just started taking some photos of our outfits, and then brands were like, hey, I like these guys, or we were reactive and saying, hi, Cameo, right. sorry, proactive, hi, Cameo, we'd love to work with you guys, hi, small brands, like, well, big brands like Tiger Me, they have lower price points, we'd love to work with you guys. Yeah. And then just starting from there, um, that question, Okay, what's next? What keeps you motivated at, or how do you keep your momentum up? Who inspires you the most and where's your inspiration coming from? Um, I really struggle to be motivated. Um, 
we always say in our relationship that Beck is the driver and I'm the steerer. So I definitely struggle being motivated. Um, I think it's it's a lot of things dependent as well, weather dependent, my mood, time of the month dependent. Sometimes I'm really motivated to do a lot of things. Um, other times I'm just like a flat, a flat, a flat tack, and yeah. I'm like, no one can pull me from this rut of being. Whereas I'll slow. be like, I'll be like, guns blazing, go, go, go. But coffee yeah. definitely is a momentum driver. It's really hard when I'm not motivated then nothing gets yeah. done like nothing gets done oh it does it is a, a much slower pace a much slower pace um like turtle slow <laughs> yeah so we definitely struggle being motivated i think when we're both in a good spiritual place we're, yeah like we're much more motivated god really does inspire us to keep us motivated because he is what we're doing it for yeah and he just yeah gives us inspiration gives us um energy a, a good spirit to do things and a creative mind to do things as well so it really uh, he really inspires us and encourages us, and I think more than anything, I don't really think we get inspiration from lots of people or if other influences. I think I love getting inspiration. I like words give me inspiration. Like words of uh, affirmation inspire me. Yeah. Like so, if I read the Bible, I every morning I go to my Bible app, I swipe left, it's on my like daily notification thing, and I read it. And today's one, for example, was so encouraging. I was like, yes, I can do life today. It was Ephesians 4 verse 2, 9. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And I'm yep. like, that really encourages me and inspires me and motivates me. First of all, be a better person. But second of all, to keep doing what we're doing, because the photos and stuff, that's not... I don't think we need inspiration to do that. It comes no. from God, our godly inspiration and wisdom. Yeah. And I think, I guess from a practical perspective, when we when we know our content is boss, yeah. when we love what we're... When we, but it may not be motivated, but we love visually what we can see on our Instagram page. Our, and our the clothes are really cool. You, you, your responses to what we're doing is really um, encouraging. We're like, yes, yes. we're going to keep doing this. because and when our followers DM us saying, I'm so proud of you guys, you guys are so encouraging, that really fuels us. Yeah, and so like, even today, we were at Short Store and a girl walked past. She said, I love you guys. And she was so well, she cute. Said, she said, oh my God, I love you guys. And I'm like, and that's, that really fuels us more than yeah. anything else. The practicality of you guys fuel our passion, our desire to do this more because we want to honor you, we want to, we want to love you and bless you through what we're doing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay, that goes to the next question. Uh, did you ever have negative feedback from friends, family, followers and how do you handle negativity? Good yes, we have. Not from friends and family. So I think that we can take, we can break it down to different ways. Negativity and also... I guess, misunderstanding. So we get misunderstood a lot in terms of our industry with our friends. Um, they don't understand our, what we do, so they think it's really easy. Mm. So I guess more than negativity, if anything, we get this sense of oh, dismissiveness of our job. Yeah, it's like when we're overseas, so fashion week, we were there for 29 days. We had two days off. The rest was work. But for us, work may mean shooting 6 a.m. in the morning, going to a cafe, doing some emails. Going to a fashion show, shooting, going home, editing, uploading, scheduling, captioning till two in the morning. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, but you weren't really working in Paris, were you? I'm like, yeah, no, we're working. They're like, but it wasn't really work because you're in Paris. I'm like, it's kind of that dismissiveness of our job. They're like, oh, but you weren't really working just because we were not doing a nine to five desk job. And I feel like if you have a cool job, even whatever it is, if you're doing PR, doing events and stuff, or if you're a photographer or if you're a designer, like, you it's get not these really work. And it's, it, yes, it is work. It's not um, a typical typical job, yes. And for us, because we love it so much, it doesn't feel like work a lot of time. But still, is laborious. We still are there till two in the morning, editing, doing emails, get like air dropping, editing, mm -hmm. air dropping back, doing this look that monotonous sort of stuff. So yeah. we get that the most, more than anything. People are like, oh, but you got the braces. You weren't really working at the races, and I'm like, like we actually were. So just because our our jobs look fun and um, luxurious and glamorous, people don't really think we're doing is work. Yeah, and which we, it, it undermines us a lot, which is the most frustrating thing I think. And then another side of it, I guess, is um, when some negativities, like some brands or some PR agencies, just don't like you uh, for that reason. For no reason, that, ha that happens a lot. Like, and it was in other girls' industries, well, it happens to them too. So I'm like, okay, it's not just us, great. Yeah. But like, they just don't invite you to their events, even though we're perfect perfect fit for the brand or we have worked with the brand before they just won't invite us and they just don't like us and and that's kind of poo because we're really likeable people yeah like, like we're really nice people we make when we meet people we make a massive effort to get to know them at a and I think, personal level okay so back to the question of how do we handle negativity there is one we have got a few negative comments sometimes every now and then 
it's usually around when we post a lot of faith-based content. Mm. Um, I think recently we got someone commenting up one of our direct messages being like, oh, just stop this whole religious thing. I follow you for your, for your fashion, not because of that you love Jesus. Just stop with all this. When I'm following you, I'm like, okay, bye. And, I, no. and she's like, I'm going to unfollow you. And I was like, that's totally oh, fine. God. I think how we respond is a greater reflection on us than it is on them. Totally. And I think how we like to react to that sort of situation is to bless them in abundance and to love them back in abundance. And kill them with kindness. Kill them with kindness, that's the phrase, but not in a smug way, but in a way it says, no, I respect your opinion. I respect mm-hmm. you say, but however, this is who we are. This is integral to our business. And if you don't, don't follow us, that's totally fine. And I think, yeah, being, beating negativity really comes down to who you see, who you see yourself as a person. Yeah. So if you're not a faith-based person, it's really the reflection of you see yourself. You love yourself and you're confident in who you are. You don't give two shits about yeah. yeah. To be honest, I could care sometimes I'm fat or ugly or annoying. I don't care. Don't Do you know care. why? Because I know who I am as a person. I am sound in the knowledge that God loves me and I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and I'm perfect in his eyes. That's all I need to know. Full stop. Yeah. You don't like me? So some of the power yeah. to do. So sometimes people think it's a cop out us to just being like, you know what, I don't care. If people don't like us, that's fine. If you don't want to follow us, that's totally fine. I respect that. However, I'm cry over respect it. me for who we are yeah. and who we know we are in Christ. I'm not gonna change it for anyone. No, exactly. So the yeah. most important things, if you're feeling like, oh, how to get through negativity, focus on yourself. Who do you, who do you think you are as a person, regardless of your faith based or not? Maybe write down the best qualities you have. Like, I'm confident, I'm beautiful, and I am intelligent. And just yeah. focus on those things. Those things, they're truth. That's truth. Exactly. So, and everything so, else is just fluff and noise and lies. Yeah, and at the end of the day, like, the way you respond in any situation reflects your heart and your character more than it reflects their identity. bitterness. Yeah. And their bitterness. So, totally. Yeah. Um, can the blog, your blog feed both of you? Are you guys, um, do you guys care about sustainability or, or is it all about consumption? I'll answer the last one, the second one actually. Um, I've been thinking about it more and more to be honest. I've noticed it since the whole like diet Prada scandal. Hilarious. How, funny, but like how much, especially Australia and high street stores are filled with knockoffs first of all, but just this inspired by all this, this, this um, high consumerist culture that we need everything yesterday. We need new, 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 new. And I kind of struggled with that recently. I'm thinking like, I don't really need all this crap. And also you can't afford it. But I just don't want you to lie about like I don't want ten jackets, I just have one. And it's hard it's it's extremely hard in our industry because where our job is to review clothing and products. And for you, you see girls around you, not you don't want to compare, but they've got this bag and this jacket and this these shoes, it's all new and you're just like, Well, can I can I compete with that just having nothing new? I just I'm not I'm not sorry about that, but it's more like the fact that I would rather, I mm. personally would rather be sustainable as yeah. much as I can. It's not possible in our job. I feel like we'd, it'd be a massive cop out to the industry that we are in if we just decide to be sustainable. But there are ways we do try. I, we loan a lot of pieces, like for example, fashion weeks, we don't buy things. Yeah. We loan a lot of pieces. I'm okay with that. I don't mind if someone knows I'm loaning a whole outfit from my Theresa. And everyone's like, oh, you didn't even buy that. I don't care. I don't want to pay for it. I don't want to buy it. Then this is my wardrobe. Mm-hmm. And this way someone else can enjoy it. Someone else can push it for their needs. I don't need to buy it. Yeah. So where we can, we try and loan pieces or share things. But we also resell a lot of our stuff. As yeah. you know, we have sales twice a year. That's, I think, we're doing our part to make sure no one is buying new things. Mm-hmm. They're our reused clothing for more than once or twice, because they're practically new. Mm-hmm. They're, they're buying for... Twenty dollars rather so, than two hundred. I think it's really important that if you know a blogger, ask them if they're having a sale. And you're buying stuff. If you're buying stuff that we don't actually get to wear that often, so you're doing everyone a better service by buying our stuff. Really, yeah. they're buying it from the store themselves. Yep. Yeah. Next question: What is your goal with your blog, and what camera stuff do you use? Okay, so our goal with our blog is, like I said before, to world make it- domination. No. For Jesus. Yes. Um, our goal with our blog, we said earlier, is to have it fully functioning, autonomous by itself. It gets high views, high click throughs. You can um, do a shop page, blah blah blah. That's our goal with our written blog. But I guess our goal with our business is to diversify and use our knowledge in marketing and this industry to be able to educate other young women who want to be involved in this industry. So like we're doing right now. It's a really hard question because I'm just like, I think we just need to use our platform as Twice Plus and the amazing opportunity we have all the followers we have to just do better yeah to, to highlight some cause or 
something or to like expose things that shouldn't be happening in the industry or I don't know. just to make people aware of things that are happening like even right now in this q and I I feel like I love doing this I love sharing from what I the little things that I think I know but it's really helping and empowering other people to do better yeah. so whether that's doing I guess empowerment courses or marketing seminars or something with a group of young girls to really encourage them to have self-worth but how to portray it through social media. Yeah, totally. And so that'd be awesome. And then question, what do we, what camera and lens are we using? Right now we're using a Canon 5D Mark IV with a 24 to 70 mil lens. Yeah. Um, we, we also, also have a 40, 50, a 50 mil lens, a 1.8 um, 50 mil lens, which we use for vlogging, um, like B-roll vlogging and um, filming and shooting. Yeah. Um, we have an Olympus EPL-8 camera, which we hey Okay, sorry for the random, like, cut through. Our SLR died, and I just realised now when I'm editing it that it cut off a chunk of us talking. Um, and then my question was, who takes our photos? So it depends. So if it's solo shots, generally we take our photos of ourselves, or Maurice takes a photo of me, and vice versa. Um, same with all the interior stuff. I do all the interior shots, the flat lays, the rack shots, that kind of stuff is all what I take myself. Um, and then to do our street style, we've got a few photographers. One is Katie Fergus, who is one of our best friends. Um, she shoots, she's been shooting for us about two and a half years. She is the best. Um, she's amazing, talented, the, per the best person in the world. Um, secondly is Martin Asenzo. We've been shooting with him just maybe four or five months now. Um, he uses a Nikon rather than Canon, so there's different kind of photos, but one moody, which we really love as well. He's been fantastic for us. Um, and then when we're in Sydney, we shoot with Wes Tan. Um, he, again, very similar to Martin Styling, um, but from Sydney. So when we're, when we're there, we'll shoot with him. Um, and then when we're overseas in Paris, we shot with Dave. Um, you just saw, seen all his photos that um, we shot with him while we're overseas in Paris. He's fantastic, but he now lives in LA. Um, so that is that. Back to the video. That's all the questions. That's everything. Hope you like them. Sorry we waffled for way too long. We overlapped a lot. But I think it was that's better than last kind of how time. our brains were. I think I was better than last time. If you have yeah. any extra questions, you can leave them in um, the comments section below. And we'll, we'll write a blog post on it. Yeah, we will. Actually, we'll compile this whole thing into a blog post. So if you have any more questions, pop them in the comments below. I can answer them and pop them into a blog post. And in our next weekly vlog, I will link it in the bio as well. So you guys awesome. can read about that. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Let us know what you think below. Um, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Bye. Bye.